For the respiratory system examination, the patient should sit up in bed, undressed to the waist. The general inspection should begin as the patient enters the room or begins undressing. The examiner stands back to look for signs of dyspnea, the rate and depth of respiration, and the use of the accessory muscles of respiration. Look at the bedside table for the presence of a sputum mug that may be conveniently placed for inspection. Cough, please. Ask the patient to cough and listen. The detailed examination begins with the hands. Look for clubbing, peripheral cyanosis, and tar staining. Squeeze the wrist to detect the tenderness of hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. And straight out like that for me, please. Okay. Is that tender when I press there? Okay, let me try this side. Tendon, any tenderness there? I'd like you to now spread your fingers apart and keep them apart. While Ask the patient to spread the fingers against resistance. And this hand. Weakness can be due to a brachial plexus involvement from a lung carcinoma. Now to put your arms straight out and bend Then the ask the patient to extend the wrists and straighten the arms. Watch for 20 or 30 seconds for the flapping tremor of carbon dioxide narcosis. Take the pulse for tachycardia, which will accompany respiratory failure or the use of bronchodilators. The irregularly irregular pulse of atrial fibrillation is common in patients with chronic lung disease. Now, just rest your head. The examination now moves to the face. Press the maxillary sinus for tenderness. And if I tap you there... Look carefully at the pupils and eyelids for ptosis. One eyelid is lower than the other, and for the presence of a smaller pupil on that side. This usually means Horner's syndrome, which can be caused by an apical lung tumour. Look at the tongue and inside the mouth for central cyanosis. Open your mouth if the patient's voice sounded hoarse, get him or her to say a few words. The examiner now has to decide if the trachea is midline or deviated to one side. It is important to be gentle and feel with the forefinger for the space on either side of the trachea. Deviation of the trachea to one side suggests upper lobe abnormalities, so it may be helpful to make this assessment at this stage. Most clinicians examine the back of the chest next. There are likely to be more signs of lung disease there. Sit the patient over the edge of the bed. Look at the shape of the chest and spine. Look for thoracotomy scars that may indicate previous lung surgery. The cervical lymph nodes are best examined from behind the patient. Some people find it easier to examine the supraclavicular nodes from this position. This is easy if the patient is sitting in a chair but may otherwise mean climbing onto the bed behind the patient. From this position, upper lobe expansion can now be Take assessed. A deep breath for me, please. The clavicle should move up the same amount on each side as the patient breathes and in. Another one. Lower lobe expansion is assessed by the examiners wrapping the hands around the base of the thorax. The thumbs are kept off the chest wall to allow them to move as the patient breathes in and out deeply. There should normally be at least five centimetres separation between them at full inspiration compared with full expiration. The examiner now flattens the hands on the chest wall to test for tactile fremitus. 
Compare the vibration felt on each side as the patient says 99 or for variety 111. Now the examiner should percuss the back of the chest. It is important that the percussing finger, the plexor, is removed from the pleximeter immediately so that the percussion note is not damped. The examiner should remember the surface anatomy of the lobes of the lung while percussing. Remember to percuss in the supraclavicular fossa. I'd like you to put your arms just a bit more in front, thank you. The same areas are now auscultated with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Normal breath sounds are Take called vesicular. And keep doing that for me, please. Thank you, Richard. I'd now like you to say the word 99 when you feel the stethoscope against your back. Vocal resonance is tested by listening to the, with the stethoscope as the patient speaks. Thank you. Now get the patient back in bed. The examiner moves around to the front of the chest and stands back to make a general inspection for scars and for the small tattoos used as markers for radiotherapy fields. The skin may appear erythematous if the area has received a course of radiotherapy. The supraclavicular nodes are examined here and this has not been done from behind. Expansion of the upper chest is best assessed by inspection. Percuss the anterior chest, percuss the clavicles directly. Auscultate. The examination is not complete without an assessment of the cardiovascular system for signs of right heart failure, which can be secondary to chronic lung disease. The examiner looks for elevation of the JVP. If there is evidence of right heart failure, auscultate the heart, feel the liver and look at the legs for edema.